we've got some materials here that we're going to be talking about to give you guys a little bit more insight as to what a Rockport speaker is. Yeah, I, f I figured that I have a, I brought some a bag of tricks and we might as well kind of go over awesome. what, what we have here. So basically, I just thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about how, how we make our drivers. So, yeah. you know, most loudspeaker companies, you know, don't make their own drivers from scratch because you know, it, it costs a lot of money mm -hmm. and you have to have a lot of know-how. And frankly, you can get really good drivers from OEM manufacturers, sure. you know, you can. But if you want to make a loudspeaker, if you want to take a loudspeaker to the next level, yep. you have to be in control over all the elements. So one of the things that we did was we started making our own drivers from scratch. What I have here are some pieces of our cone. So this is our six inch mid-range driver. Okay. Check that out. Yeah. And it's made, uh, it's, a, it's a sandwich composite construction. And so what that means is you've got a layer of carbon fiber on top okay, and a yep. layer on the bottom. And then you can see there's a section thickness between yeah. the two layers. Yep, it's, it's really stiff. Really stiff and really light. Yeah. So that, that mid-range driver weighs two pennies, but you can almost stand on it without it being deformed. I can step on this. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna put this on the ground and step on it. Yep. Yeah, it's not it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. No, but the, I mean the key is really yeah. it's this it's the stiffness to um, to weight ratio that matters because what we're trying to do is build a really light, really stiff cone mm -hmm. and then put a big engine on the back of it, a big yeah. motor system. It's the same way that a race car works. You know, yeah. you've got uh, a very light body, yep. really big engine, and then you've got a very responsive car that you can you know, cut around curves with sure. and, and have be, have complete control. It's the same idea here. When a signal comes into this, excuse me, when a signal comes into this driver, this acts like a perfect piston. It delivers music very quickly and it stops and starts really quickly. Yeah, and so you don't want it to hinder any part of that. You no. You need it to be light, no. stiff, and just do its thing. Absolutely. Yeah, and the principle, no break up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the first breakup mode of this cone is 6,000 hertz. <laughs> And, nice. and we and we we cross it over at around two thousand hertz. So okay. it's it's way wow. it works way out outside of where we use it. Yeah. We don't know of any other cone that does that. Excellent. Um, so, but the concept behind sandwich construction, I can illustrate for you. Oh yeah, it's definitely. Kind of, it's kind of fun. Let's so, see what's under the hood. So if you take <laughs> so we use we use a foam. This is this is a honeycomb, but mm -hmm. it's just the same principle. If, if you take a core material, it's it's kind of bendy. Sure. But if you put a skin on the top and bottom, yeah. try and bend that. I you definitely can't. cannot. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like a cookie. I know. Um, the reason why that works is because um, you're using, so carbon fiber is not strong in all directions, right? Right. It's, um, it's kind of bendy yep. on its own, but it doesn't like to stretch. Mm -hmm. That's where it's strong, it's tensile strength. And what you're doing in a sandwich cone composite is you're putting this intention. Okay. You know, when you're trying to bend this uh, cone, yeah. you're trying to make the carbon fiber stretch, right. and that's where it really is strong. Yeah. And this particular carbon fiber, I don't know if you've seen this checkerboard pattern before. I have seen the checkerboard pattern yeah. before, yeah. yeah. So this carbon fiber is the lightest and stiffest carbon fiber fabric that you can buy. Got it. And so it's just, it's the best at doing that. Yeah. But Rockport was actually the first company to utilize this fabric right. in the audio industry. Okay. And we did that in 2011 with awesome. the original Avior. Oh, wow. About 10 years ahead of anybody else utilizing this material. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I did not know that fun yeah. fact. Yeah, fun fact. And so it's, and it's all flat. You were explaining because there's... Oh, yeah. Right? So, yeah. So the spread toe technology, the reason yeah. why this is the best carbon yeah. fiber is it... So, you know, carbon fiber is a fabric. Yes. It's made of threads. Yes. Threads are typically round. And if you think about a round thread, if you were trying to pull a round thread, there'd be a little bit of give in it mm -hmm. just because it's round. Right. Spread toe carbon fiber technology, what they do is they flatten the thread before they start the weave. Yeah. So that slack is already kind of like, it's kind of like pre-tension. Right, it's so already it, stretched to its finest exactly. point. So yeah. when it, so then when you try and stretch on it now, it stretches even less. There's, right. there's less slack in the system. That and that's makes what, sense. That's what makes it you know, the lightest and, and stiffest. What's the technology called again? Spread toe. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. It's T-O-W, not T-O-E. Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, not the fungi cream. Yeah. Um, 
So that's great. That's fantastic. So that's, and then uh, yeah. the tweeter, just really quick. Oh yeah, uh, so, touch upon the tweeter. Well, so the Orion. This was, is my favorite. <laughs> absolutely. So so the Orion was the first um, completely ground up tweeter design. Okay. That is, you won't see this often because most people don't make their own beryllium domes. The reason why we made this one is because we needed one that was really big for the Orion. So this yeah. is this is an inch and a quarter. Okay. And you can oh, see shit. it's it's such a weird material. It's incredibly ain't light. Nothing there. But it's very very stiff. Yeah. It can you know you don't want to eat it or and and you don't want to uh, if there's if it turns into dust you don't want to breathe it in. <laughs> Otherwise beryllium is quite safe. Okay. So <laughs> great as long as we're not snorting and eating yeah, beryllium then we're good. Don't do that. Okay. No. <laughs> but what I love about beryllium is that it doesn't sound like anything. Yeah. You know we've tried a lot. Of different materials. Yep. We've tried silk dome. We've tried. We've actually tried using this carbon fiber material. Um, any. We've tried metal domes. We've tried anything that you can make a tweeter out of. Because this is so light mm -hmm. and so stiff, and actually has some self damping properties. Yep. It really doesn't have a character of its own. Yeah. And that's for us. That's. That's what we're shooting for all the time. And it won't distort. I mean, a lot of my, a lot of my favorite speaker companies actually use beryllium in some sense, I, you know, cartridges when, you know, I mean, the beryllium's a fantastic yeah. metal. Sometimes it gets a bad rap because it's it's tricky to work with and sometimes it's not implemented right. Sure. And it can sound kind of bright if it's mm -hmm. not done right. Yeah. But I would encourage anyone who is interested in hearing what beryllium can sound like to yeah. listen to a pair of rock ports. I've, uh, I've actually seen a beryllium tweeter driver, like just in its, flesh body with uh, 10 hertz pumped through it. Yep. And it didn't break structure. Oh yeah. So no, that's like a reason for It's a an incredible design. material. Yep. Yeah. So. And it does have a clean sound and I really like that. And again, um, a lot of the brands that we're, we're representing here today, separating that, that luxury and that technology and that hi-fi, like they, they spend so much time developing that sound and I just appreciate, you know, Brockport yeah. Fine tuning every single speaker and yeah. giving us. That. We definitely we do it because we love it. You yeah. know, there when you manufacture all these little parts and design them and make them all from scratch. To be honest, it's very expensive. Yeah. And even though our loudspeakers are expensive, if people think that we make a lot of money. Honestly, we don't. <laughs> we're, we're we're in this because we love it and we're trying yeah. to advance the state of the art. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we realize it's not these products aren't for everybody because they are really expensive, but. When you're trying to push the boundaries of what's possible, yeah. things get expensive. You know, the best of anything is expensive. That, that's right. You buy it right once. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. I uh, really take a lot of pride now being in um, hi-fi, earning a paycheck, being an adult, that I can buy see things right once, and um, it just makes sense as to why rock ports are so fabulous and why they do actually cost the money that they do. Yeah. You know, you're not you're not buying a, a cheap vehicle. No. Absolutely yeah. not, no. So it's gonna last you a lifetime. 100%. Most people that buy a rock port, it's their last speaker. Unless they upgrade to another rock port, honestly. <laughs> right on, yeah, hell yeah. It's true. All yeah. right, sweet. So I appreciate uh, picking your brain on the technology. Absolutely. And, yeah, thank thank you, Kat. Yeah, of course.